So I wasn't sure how I wanted this season of my isekai life to end, but after seeing the hilarious exposure of what is Yuji and what is this mystery slime tamer, after having an episode where everything that's happened in this season, all the characters we've met, came together for one final hurrah and they came out victorious. I mean, it was funny enough having Yuji basically seem like a god among men to just the father over here looking up in the heavens basically looking at their lord and savior. And that was well and good, but to see the casual exposure, that was the icing on the cake that lets me leave episode 12 in this season. If we never get more, this is all we get. I can leave with a grin on my face and easily recommend it to so many people because it felt like a very fun and fulfilling adventure. The biggest thing for me was that it definitely felt like once you got to around the halfway point of this show, there was an arc that was being told. All these episodic adventures of this casual adventurer Yuji who just moves on once he solves a case because he doesn't want to get too exposed or get too relied on. We ended the episode here with him accepting the fact that unlike his original world, teamwork is something that he enjoys, something that he can appreciate, and something he can actually depend on. Rather than killing himself going solo and overworking himself to death, he can actually leave the villagers to defend themselves if he gives them a little bit of a boost, a little bit of a buff. He can fight the apocalypse level threat that's standing in front of him and not need to worry, which if this was Yuji at the start of the anime, he would have tried to both defend the village and fight this man, and he would have died without much struggle. So that level of character development, it's not the type of character development that's revolutionary, or it's something that you've never seen before. But like I've complimented now over 12 different videos, this show has an arc. It has a plot that it moves towards, and the overall end result of him casually being exposed with those, like, cannibal tigers. I mean, that's a pretty funny way because his entire mantra has been like, okay, I need to move along before people realize who I am. And the fact of the matter is, he had this very funny moment with this girl who's saying like, oh, you know, you're probably just trying to act strong because your party got killed, so you're pretending they never existed. And then this woman comes in, pushes up her glasses, is like, wait a second, this was done by fire, and you're saying you're a tamer? And then just the way the building blocks fall, it's hilarious, and I think this was a perfect way to end the season because not only did, did you get that apocalypse level threat, you got something that felt like all the characters got brought together in the end. You felt like Yuji got this massive boost in his morale. He actually started caring about people and connections, and it felt like from where episode 1 started to where episode 12 ended, they all connected from characters he met, threats he's dealt with, and yes, the cult's still doing the cult-like things, but that's a pretty long-term goal more than likely which obviously the source material would continue to explore, but also just the fact of the matter is if they ever get lucky enough to do a season two, similar to maybe how Shadow's House, you know, they wrapped it up in a way that you thought, okay, if we had to stop here, that's fine. And then season two surprised us and just carried on with the source material, right? So you never know what the future of anime production will bring. The big thing is, is it's an isekai? An isekai sell? Even if like they're not good, they typically get at least a season two. This one is something I'd argue was very good, so... I think it's not impossible that within a couple of years time we might see a season two, but if this was all we got, this was a very fun way to wrap it all up. And ever since this man was introduced with his psychotic look, almost like he was about to throw lightning bolts down on us, there was something in my mind that said he reminds me of a character design or a presentation choice that I've seen recently, and this episode it clued in for me. If anyone's watched Sunny Boy, the character designs in that show are very unique, very distinct, and I'm wondering, am I the only one, when looking at this man, feel like his character design is pulled from Sunny Boy? I say that as a compliment, I love the character designs in Sunny Boy, they're so unique, they're so distinct, but it's been just eating away in the back of my mind. I was like, I know I've seen an anime where, because his character design just feels different than the rest of the cast, which makes sense given the level of threat, the power he radiates. It totally makes sense that they would try to change the art style a little bit to make him feel different and maybe more outer-worldly than someone like Yuji, who's currently just, you know, a normal guy in terms of how he looks in the grand scheme of things, where this man's literally about to launch nuclear disasters 
on the entire goddamn world. But ever since I clued into Sunny Boy, to me, I can't unsee that. And I'm wondering if that's just me. Maybe I'm the only one who sees the similarities. But seriously, just think about it. I think I kind of hit the nail on the head on maybe where they got their influence in terms of where they kind of like got the idea of how to stylize because it feels so on the nose in the best possible way. But I thought the fight in general was really good because a lot of people brought up the fact that like the potions that he was given three or four episodes back, you know, to recover his mana from 10 minutes prior. Yeah. We knew he had those. The big issue wasn't the matter of him not having mana. It's that this man seemingly had unlimited. So just continuing to cast Hellfire or making barriers or doing different spells, it's not going to be enough, especially as they quickly introduce the threat of basically the villagers having to deal with just an army of monsters. And I like the fact that they got around with it, kind of using all the different things that he's done throughout this season, right? First of which, the monster armor that he spent a good time basically doing. If he didn't have the monster armor, the barrier that he ultimately used to trap him, both with the spear as well as the kind of like box of the compass kind of looked like an apocalypse level threat there it's in itself. I like the fact that he needed the monster armor. He needed to recover his mana with the potion that he was given. He also needed to, you know, just use the spells and stuff that he's kind of experimented with and just his own natural skills that he's built up while using it sort of a thing. And in return, everything built up to this grand finale where he so casually, and in such a hilarious way, continues to strike him down with Divine Strike. And I thought at first, like, I was like, okay, I'm just laughing because I'm laughing at something that's not supposed to be funny. But when they quickly start doing the cuts and you just see him just moving his arm with Divine Strikes left and right, as Father's standing down below being like, what am I seeing? And so then you casually do the stab as well. That was some comedy gold, and I think My Sky Life has been a consistently hilarious show, all things considered. And Yuji, like I said, kind of has a dry sense of humor. In this moment, it's hard to tell for sure. Was this him, you know, trying to be funny, like, I'm just going to casually kill you with Divine Strikes, or was that more for the viewer, or maybe a bit of both? I don't know. Either way, it was a brilliant way to end this threat that, honestly... I wasn't sure how he was going to do. Obviously, it would have to be some form of spell that would work on him. Just the whole concept of almost like a holy divine strike against someone who's trying to kill the world makes sense. But what would be the way that he could get around someone who has unlimited MP versus a guy who has some potions that can recover his MP but not do the same level that he can, right? And that's why I can leave an episode like this just feeling very content with this show. It was a consistently fun show. It started out very fun, but... As it progressed through these arcs, and as we got accustomed to the cultist plotline, and how all the characters connected with Yuji, and how they came back together towards the end, it felt like there was a gradual arc that we followed that leaves me off feeling like, yeah, there's still so much for this man's life to tell, but I think it's such a hilarious and such a different way to end his life if this is all we get here, versus how he started up and how he said like he died of overwork being alone basically. The man came out on top saying teamwork isn't all that bad and while this is his worst case scenario in terms of how he's been all season, if people know who I am I'll get depended on, he's now to the point of actually liking people and kind of trusting in them so it kind of makes sense to me that you know he would be a little more okay with it unless he finds a way to nope the hell out of there and maybe basically erase their memories or something, I don't know. Either way, I leave my Sky life with a grin on my face. I found it to be very charming, very fun, and I can see myself rewatching it in the future, whether we get a season two or not. So fingers crossed if we do get one, and if we do, I mean, I'll definitely probably talk about it because I really enjoy talking about this season, but thoughts, feelings, and if you got any ideas on what you'd like to see maybe in a season two, let me know down below. Leave a like if you enjoyed, and subscribe if you're new around here. Till next time, everyone, please take care and have a good one.